You know him from the D4 and A Place to Bury Strangers. Now here is Dion Runadun, direct from New York City, to talk about his second solo album, Beyond Everything. So since I last saw you, you've made a new record. <laughs> yeah, I probably made a few since I last spoke, but not not this yeah, this is my first uh uh yeah, my, my sophomore album. Yep. Yeah. All right, it's called Beyond Everything. So mm -hmm. tell me a little from what I understand, you wrote a lot of songs in the last couple of years. So yeah. how did you whittle it down to this uh collection of 10 that we have here? Yeah, I'm kind of always writing a lot of songs, um, constantly writing songs. Sometimes I'll take a break for six months, but if I'm not on a break from writing, I'm I'm just in here every day writing and I turn up, you know, a song or two or three a week or something. Um, and I just find that it's just good practice for my craft, you know, just get, I, you know, get better at songwriting. So um, I'm always trying to you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel as such, but I am always trying to push myself further and just write better and better songs and, and, and definitely try to go down some different avenues. But um, right. yep. but I, I guess, uh, you know, uh, I guess w when I'm writing all these songs, I just kind of, you know, I, I keep a, a log of them all and then... Um, once I start, you know, I feel like I have enough songs that could make an album. I start trying to piece together an album. And uh, once I have the songs that make a good album, that's when I know I'm done. And that's yep. when I know I have enough songs. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's not just about writing 10 really good songs. It's about writing 10 songs that work well together, you know? Okay, so is there a... a a theme that ties these together or makes them feel like they belong on the same uh, ladder? <laughs> well, I don't know if there is a theme as such, um, but I guess they just worked with each other. You know, they, you know, they, they offset each other. You know, there's, there's one song that does that. There's one song that does this. It's not just all the same kind right. of vibe. And that's what I require to make an album. But yeah, I wouldn't say they're, there's a thematic thing about it, you know? Right. Yeah. So you do most of the recording yourself, but you have a couple of folks that help you out with the drums. Is that the way it's working? Yeah. I record everything in this room pretty much, right. uh, but you know, I can't really record drums in here. So once I record everything, I, I write the drum parts and I get a drummer to learn the parts and we go down to a studio and we, and we lay them down in, in a day or two. Right. And that's that. And then I come <laughs> back here and mix it. Uh -huh. so do you like working by yourself like that i do i do like working by myself um it can be you know i have other projects and other things especially in the past where i where i work with other people right and so that so i i get to sort of itch both those scratches you know what i mean um you know working by yourself can be a bit lonely and i can and, and i do like I like bouncing off people for ideas, but with this particular project, it being under my own name, I do like working by myself. And I like having to force myself, you know, when, when, I, when I'm up against the wall and I can't think of an idea or finish the, the artwork or something, um, you know, it forces me to sort of dig deeper and within myself to, to complete those things. And that, that's kind of a cool challenge. You cool. Know? So the, yeah. the album opens with a tune called Goodbye Satan. And to me, it sounds like it's kind of a, a drum machine kicking things off rather than an actual drum kit and, yeah. and a keyboard, which is, you know, usually it's guitars and rah, 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 turn up yeah. to 11. So uh, tell me a little bit about why you chose that to uh, lead this thing off with. I guess I was uh, fiddling around with drum machines and that, that's a drum machine, a Seaberg drum machine, the same one that Suicide used to use. Oh yeah. So I just kind of wanted to step away, I guess, from the drummer thing and come up with something, you know, just like a simple sort of, it's a, like a waltz or something, I can't remember, um, you know, beat and just sort of work around that. Uh, it's almost got a doo-wop vibe to it. Um, I, I don't know. It just, it just, 
I don't know. I guess that was the first idea for the song, like write something on the keyboards and with the drum machine. That right. was the idea for the song. And uh, and I probably threw some lyrics or some vocal melodies over that. And then, you know, the guitars came last. And I guess I opened the album with that um, because it, it just worked. Um, usually I'll, I'll open the album with a rocker or something like that. Sure. And, yeah. you know, and that's, you know, in this genre of music, it's very easy to do that, but I felt like kind of taking a bit of a chance and, and, and I was listening to, I always put things in different orders and, um, I thought that was just a really cool intro, you know, especially leading into the second song, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. By my side. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you, it's interesting. You mentioned suicide. It seems to me that suicide is becoming the new velvet underground. You know, it's one of those bands that um, nobody paid attention to really when they were uh, active back in the late seventies. Now they've influenced everybody. So yeah. how, how, how did you be, uh, learn about them were you, from the start or how? <laughs> Well, not from the start, I guess. I'm too you know, young for that. <laughs> exactly, I'm too. I was probably you know born the year they they, they started, you know. Yeah. Uh, and they were older guys in the scene back then. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just I I guess I just heard a couple of songs and they resonated. And uh, you know, I, what I like about Suicide is, is is the fact that there were no real guitars. It was just synths and drum machine and vocals yet they create you know they're musically it's very 1950s rock and roll you know? yeah yeah you just yeah. you strip back all the effects and, and 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 stuff and it's like a lot a lot of like 50s vibes and uh you know and and the attitude i guess the attitude you know resonates with me as well you know mm -hmm. um, yeah so when you think of 50s rock and roll do you think of like rockabilly or doo-wop or you know johnny ray or elvis all, the, all, all, all those things all of those things, you know, yeah, doo-wop, uh, you know, Elvis, of course, um, yeah, Johnny Ray, he's the guy who sounded like he was crying when he was singing, um, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, Rockabilly, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, Link Ray, who's one of my favorite guitarists of all right. time, I, you know, I love it, heavily influenced by him, um, yeah, I don't know, you know, that the birth pace of of, I don't know, like popular culture in some respects, you know, uh, rock and I, I guess 1950s rock and roll is kind of the birthplace of popular culture yeah. where it took from the blues and, and, and gospel and country, which I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that in the pop culture bag. Like in the thirties, you didn't really have pop culture, right. I guess. But well, you know, it was once, like Bing Crosby and, you know, Rudy Valley and people like that. E exactly. But like once 1950s hit, then you got all those kids. It just was an explosion and all these kids just got swept up into the revolution. And, yeah. uh, and that is the heartbeat, I guess, of what I, I like to do. And I, and I, and I think I, I think I feel that same feeling you know right you know, that, i don't know that i don't know that the energy i don't know now one of the tracks i wanted to touch on was elastic diagnostic pretty, yeah. pretty wild kind of almost experimental if you will a bit psychedelic what, what's going on there Well, usually, usually for songs, when it, when I when I start a song, the first idea, well, no, it's not the first idea, but the first thing I come up with is often the song title. Um, so that's kind of how that started, and I wanted the idea for that song is I wanted to create a sound that replicated the hum of life. Okay. And, uh, you know, just the feeling of like, you know, you know just the, the, the feeling of like either satin's rings or like, or just, just the, the feeling of life coursing through one's veins. And so the guitars that come in after the first verse or the first line, that they sort of hum together. I got two guitars that hum together. And that was just, uh, that was the idea for that song and everything else just sprung around, around that. No, cool, yeah. cool. It's interesting that you you come up with the title first, then the song, because uh, I think it's probably more traditional that it works the other way around. So, how did that yeah, happen well, for you? How did you I get to that it, point? <laughs> it's because I, I work on the computer a lot, you know, and um, you know I, I record everything on my computer in my in my studio. So when I open a session, I have to give it a name. 
Right. So uh, <laughs> I try to come up with the coolest name I can. And quite often that name will end up changing. By the time I finish the song, uh, maybe another name will happen, but not with that song. Uh, I just I just kept that name. Right. Now there is some just straight ahead rockers on the record. One of the ones that's been already released is Living and Dying With You. And it's got this animated video that goes along with it. Um, who's, uh, where did the uh, animation come from? And was it your idea? Was it somebody else's? Did you give it a, turn it over or did you direct it kind of? Last song that I wrote for the record, oh. uh, it almost wasn't going to be on the record, but I, at last minute when we were recording drums, I got the dude to play drums on it and <laughs> ended up you know, being cool. Um, I came up with the idea for the video. I pretty much come up with, you know, part of the process of this project, it's kind of important that I do come up with all the ideas, with the video ideas, the artwork ideas, the songs. You know, that's kind of why I give it my own name. It's not really an ego thing. It's more of a you know, like this is an extension of who I am. And, uh, you know, I've always struggled with uh, working with people or, or just like not working with people, but having someone else come up with an idea for me. Right. You know, like we working with a producer who's trying to interpret my idea. It pretty much 99% of the, percent of the time comes out nothing what I like. So, you know, uh, I came up with the idea for that video and it's, it's basically just the straightforward um, narration of the lyrics is what that is. Um, and, and I wanted to, I, I saw a couple of video animated videos and I thought it would be cool to animate it and, and have it be kind of just a fun, heartfelt, colorful representation of the song. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. One other one I want to touch on is Too Hard to Love, Too Young to Die. It's yeah. almost a pop song with the organ and the whole thing going on there. Uh, well, I was reading the paper and I was reading about all these refugees uh, in Europe uh, going to the island of Lesbos, I think, um, by boat. And, um, you know, quite often these refugees that travel by boat, they either get turned away from countries and they end up like dying and sinking. Right. And, and, yep. and on Lesbos, there was a huge fire that wiped through the camp, um, you know. And so that's kind of about, you know, I, I guess that situation where, you know, um, you know, these these kids, you know, that, that are refugees, people just don't care. They just don't yeah. give a shit. If it's not happening to them, yep. then generally most people, it's, you know, it's just they just don't care about it. And um, that's what the song title is about, I guess, you know. Okay. All right. Now, speaking of current events, do you kind of keep an eye on what's going on in New Zealand at all? How often do you check in on what's going on back at home? Yeah, I'm always checking on, on what's going on back home. You know, I, it's it's good to read different, um, you know, newspapers as well. I feel like, you know, just, you know, getting, you know, I'm reading a lot less news these days. I just feel like I'm too busy for it, which is kind of nice. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I'm always reading on what's happening, you know, New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I found when I moved from the States to here to New Zealand, that when yeah. I checked out the news over the front of the States, it seemed different, a different perspective yes. hearing it from the outside in. And I was wondering yeah. if it was the case. Well, it is, it's great hearing a different perspective, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I like that. I, um, I, I think I consider myself a person that's pretty open to other people's perspectives. Um, and I think a lot of the planet isn't open to other people's perspectives. You know, obviously there's a, a lot of lines drawn in the sand these days and you're on one side or the other, but I, you know, I don't really see it like that. You know, I don't agree with everybody's opinion, but I'm willing to listen to them and uh, be open and live with people that have differing, uh, differing opinions. 
I feel like it's the only way forward, man. Yep. <laughs> So you're, you're going to take this show on the road sometime this year, aren't you? You're going on tour? Yep. We're going actually a month today. We leave on tour. We're doing a West Coast tour with uh, our friends, the Black Angels. Um, we're doing six shows with them, six of our own. Uh, then we've got a, a few East Coast dates that haven't been released yet. Uh, and then we are going to know, uh, Europe for a month in November. Right. So, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that. I, th I feel like this is the way. Well, this is what this band's supposed to be doing, you know. Who, who's the band? Who's the band? Uh, well, I play guitar and sing. Yep. Um, I have another guitar player called Jake um, who plays guitar, and he's from a band called uh, Native Son here in New York. Uh, my friend Claudia, she plays bass. Uh, she's in a band called Baby Shakes. Um, and then I have my friend Nick who is playing drums. So oh. we're a four-piece, you know. Yep, yep, yep. Think you think you'll bring it down under at some point? I would like to sometime. Um, you know, it's just expensive to get there. Um, you know, it's it's tough. It's tough to yeah. do anything these days. Uh, even touring in the U.S. is really really hard. Uh, I think Europe is going to be the most uh, I don't know the logical step at this point. You know, people in Europe seem to you know, be big music fans is that there's a huge sort of um, market for my kind of music there. Uh, you know, they look after you there. Um, it's it's easier to make it work. Mm. You know, here it's very, very tough. You know, people don't care. You know, Yeah, it's, it's kind of like an every man for himself kind of vibe in the States, I think, whereas... Like you it said, really is. In it really Europe, is. They're kind of looking out for you, I guess. And that, that makes yeah, a, it's, a it's, big difference. It's a very capitalist thing here, you know, yep. and unless you've got some hype behind you, then yep. um, you, you got to do what I'm going to do. And that's to get in people's faces and prove that you, you know, that you've got something that's, you know, special. Yep. Um, and with New Zealand too, I mean, even in New Zealand, my market is very, very small. Mm -hmm. So it's such a tiny country. It's like, yeah. it's hard to get down there. It's, you know, it's expensive. And then, you know, when I do, it's like, you know, there's not, not a huge market for it, you know, to be honest. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, good luck with the album. It's out, what, June 10th, right? So uh, June 10th. Yeah. Should be exciting. And uh, hopefully yeah. the, at least the tour will be fun. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. No, but, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I think it's all going pretty well, you know, so I'm, I'm pretty stoked with it, you know. Cool. Well, hopefully we'll see you back here soon sometime. It'd be great. No doubt you will. Yeah. All righty. Have a great day and thanks for talking yeah. to me. You too. Thanks for taking the time, man. We'll see you. Right. Bye-bye. Yeah.